Red, rocky and unforgivably harsh. Australia's dry, dusty interior could be mistaken for Mars. What we see here is the kind of environment, ancient environment, that could very well have been in place at Mars billions of years ago. Not much can survive on these barren lands, but it is home to the cradle of life on planet Earth. I mean, the exciting thing about these outcrops is you're looking at your great, 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 great grandfathers and grandmothers. This is really the start of everything that came afterwards. NASA and the European Space Agency are here to learn from Australian scientists about this landscape. These rocks date back more than three billion years and hold the oldest signs of life anywhere in the world. This is a real beauty here. It may be hard to believe, but this now fossilised form of microbial life is what humans evolved from. One of the exciting things is that the abundance of the patterns that indicate life are all throughout these outcrops. Jim Watson is the director of NASA's 2020 Mars mission. This trip to Australia is in some ways a test run for scientists to learn what to look for on Mars. They'll be on the greatest treasure hunt ever. And their job is to try to search out and interpret the geology at Mars to understand both the evolution of the planet but also in our search for evidence of ancient life. NASA's rover will take samples of the Mars crust and in years to come, try returning them to Earth. The mission will be looking for fossils of a similar age to the ones found here. We hope that we can start to have a better answer for are we alone in the universe? Where and how did life emerge? Those who call the Pilbara home know this country is special. Dinosaur? Oh, Can we have the fish? But today there's a chance for a group of Indigenous teenagers to learn just how significant their backyard is and the way it's helping the world's top space scientists. How we get the rover to Mars. And so these are all the pieces that we have to stack together. They're off to do their own field work at the very same site. Did you ever realise growing up here that this is sort of what Mars looks like? No, I never actually realised. I just thought like, you know, just live in a hot town. Nothing to actually like about it, but now it's actually started to get me interested. And these scientists in training make time for fun on the way. But there's some thoughtful conversations along the bumpy road. Do you want to be an astronaut? Yeah. I would want to. Yeah. Just fly around in space. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> See if there's life on Mars. 12 year old Zalia Edgar grew up close to this precious site. The trip has opened her mind. Thinking about it now, yeah, a lot. It seems really cool, actually. Yeah, thinking of being an astronaut now. But there are fears the next generation may not have long to study this landscape. These rare rock formations have survived for billions of years, yet in recent decades they've faced a new threat. Illegal fossil hunters who come and steal slabs of precious stone, whittling away the area's history. Here, a gaping hole where once there was a remarkable stone. We've been greatly saddened by the fact that, you know, a few of the showcase pieces, which has the richest information about that early life, samples have been taken. Geologist Martin van Kranendonk has spent decades reading these rocks, passing on his knowledge to everyone from school kids to NASA scientists. He's now pushing for greater protection of the area. My great fear is that some of the best evidence for life which we have on the planet will be removed to go and sit on somebody's desk or be in a collection or sold on eBay. A region that's held on for millennia, now facing a time bomb. But the hope remains that this place in the Australian outback will unlock the secrets of space. Oh,